Hey, General Chemistry Tribe. We're still in this conversation about bonding. And so far we have a couple different models uh, for bonding. We have our Lewis. Dot theory, right? That helped us to get a perspective on you know the skeletal structure or two D representation of a molecule, and then we actually use that in terms of uh, Vesper theory to then get at a, you know, geometry and a, a 3D perspective. So what we have to understand here is that these are models, right? These are, you know, ways for us to understand what's going on, you know, as far as Lewis and breaking up, you know, lone pairs of electrons, writing dots, right? It was just a way to try to understand, um, you know, what was going around in their world as far as, you know, the molecules they were, they were studying. And then same with the Vesper ideas, right? Really just this idea of, of geometry and, and how do we deal with these repulsion effects of electrons, bonding electrons, lone pairs of electrons, um, et cetera. And so that gives rise to its 3D geometry. So what we find is that there's a couple of different bonding models um, to really describe different aspects of it. So we have the Lewis dot, we have Vesper, and now we're going to get into t the last two, um, one being uh, valence bond theory, which is what we're going to talk about now, and then um, lastly, MO theory. So we have valence, uh, valence bond theory, and we have molecular orbital theory. And so here is where we're going to focus our time in this particular set, um, where now we're getting into this notion of hybridization. Um, and in the last scenario, we're going to really energetics. So we've already covered the first two, right? So we're focusing on three and four. So let's get into this notion of valence bond theory. So, you know, we have a problem with, you know, how we view valence electrons. And um, basically how elements bond. Um, to one another, you know, using these unpaired valence electrons. As, a, as an example of this, let's look at um, methane. Now, we've already talked about this molecule, and so it would be really easy, you know, to say that carbon looks like this. We have our four hydrogen atoms, and then when we put that together, we have a Lewis dot structure like this. And we have a geometry that would be tetrahedral.
Now, the problem really kind of arises if we look at carbon and really, you know, kind of expand on this idea. If we look at carbon, well, carbon has, you know, 2s and 2p valence electrons. And if we were to write them in terms of, of how we know in terms of electronic configurations, I would end up with this. So the question that, you know, arises is why is carbon right in Lewis terms uh, basically shown as having those four unpaired electrons, you know, as opposed to this. Because if we look above, right, we have, you know, two electrons in the 2s, and they're paired up, right? And that's really what this lower representation or I'm sorry to the right representation is kind of showing is that idea of the 2s and the 2p looking like this so that's the problem between the Lewis dot theory and then now talking about well you know it should have been an initial question right what or why are we writing carbon like this with four unpaired valence electrons? And so this is where this idea of valence bond theory comes into play. So valence bond theory explains, you know, why elements can bond um, using their unpaired valence electrons um, through a process called hybridization. All right, hybridization is really uh, what I would call a mashup and this is a mashup of valence atomic orbitals basically to create new hybridized bonding orbitals so that's what hybridization does it's it's really this kind of this mashup notion and as a result that allows us to create now new bonding orbitals with uh, valence bond theory we have um, two different types the bonds, we have what's known as the sigma bond. And this is a, you know, an overlap of hybridized orbitals between, between elements. This is really the first connection. 
uh, that is always made. And then we have the pi bond. And the pi bond is actually an overlap of non hybridized uh, p orbitals between elements. This is either, you know, the second or the, the, the third connection. So the big difference here is the idea of hybridized or non-hybridized. With our sigma bond, it's the overlap of hybridized orbitals. While with the pi bond, it's an overlap of non-hybridized orbitals, specifically p orbitals for us. Um, but there are other types of pi systems out there um, as well. Um, so, so that's what we're going to get into now is looking at now the idea of hybridization, how elements are actually taking their valence electrons, which we've talked about in terms of electronic configurations, and now bring them to this bonding um, scenario. When looking at these connections, if we have, you know, a general, you know, bonding motif, we could say that, you know, if we have, you know, X bonded to Y, right, this would be our sigma bond, and this would be a result of hybridized orbitals. You know, for bonding. But if we extend it to, you know, our, you know, maybe next scenario with a double bond, we now have two features that are there. We still have the first connection, which is the sigma bond. And again, that's the, the hybridized orbital. And then we have on the top side, the pi bond. And that's from non hybridized orbitals and we can go to our third you know scenario which is the the triple bond where we'd have x you know, with the triple bond to the y and we just find that you know it's the same gambit we're just increasing the amount of pi bonds that we have So we have our triple bond with its sigma, and then we have now two pi bonds and again those are from non-hybridized uh, orbitals. So if we were to just, you know, do a general, you know, makeup of this, you know, a single bond is equal to basically one sigma bond. Our double Bond is then equal to 
Now two different bonds, right? We have the one sigma bond, and now we also have one pi bond. And so both of those are going along with the actual double bond. And we could say now extend it to the triple as well, right? That, that we still have that first sigma bond, that first connection, but now we actually have two pi bonds. So that's what we're going to get into in terms of talking about, you know, this idea of hybridization, how we need to hybridize orbitals to make the first connection. We then, if we have more connections, meaning a double bond, like with an extra layer of connectivity or a triple bond with a couple extra layers of connectivity, that extra layer or layers comes from right, the idea of non-hybridized orbitals. So let's get into that.